Hello everyone, how are you guys today? Um, you guys are live here on my Facebook page at Brandy, and I just thought I would come on and do kind of a fun project. Um, I'm trying to mix in more like small projects and fun little things that uh, aside from just furniture, because I do a lot of furniture. Oh, hi, I see people popping on. Come on and tell me you can see me, hear me. Let me know where you're watching from. I don't know if I switched my internet over, guys. Hi, Kelly. Hang on one second. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. Ugh, technology will be the death of me. Um, so there's a little pause in there, and I apologize for that. Um, that'll skip over when it's on the replay. Okay, so we're here, back here live. Um, I'm going to be working on a fun project with you today, so let me flip my camera up a little bit. Have you guys seen these purse projects from Redesign with Prima? I'm a purse girl. Um, I carry a Michael Kors purse. I love purses. They're beautiful, but these are actually pretty cute. So this is one that I haven't touched yet. So this is what they look like, and they're all... They're leather. These are going to be available to Redesign with Prima retailers and through your Redesign with Prima retailers. Thank you guys for sticking around with me. So I'm going to go through and show you guys kind of the inside layout of these because this is important to me. I have a mom purse. My purse has Hot Wheels and I don't know, sticks of gum and all kinds of things in it. So I'm going to show you guys the layout of them. But they actually have, this is the same layout as, as my Michael Kors purses. And it's got the center pocket design here with tons of storage. So I appreciate that they thought of this stuff in the designs of these purses. Oh, you're, oh you are cleaning your first. Brittany, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you're doing your first piece. So they have the center design and then they've got like a cell phone pocket over here, which that's awesome. That's awesome. And then of course, a, um, oh, I thought there was a, oh, it's on the other side, a zipper side pocket inside too. And I put in here like, um, you know, gosh, what do I have in here? Tweezers. Uh, what do you have in your mom purse? You guys come on and tell me what uh, what you have in your mom purse. Band-Aids, um, Kleenex, right? Please help me out here. Tell me I'm not the only one who has a purse that's like a suitcase. And then this is like a light blush color. So I'm gonna give away kind of what I wanted to do on this one. I wanted to put a baby transfer on here. I thought some of the watercolor flowers that come with um, with the uh, nail file. Yes, nail file. <laughs> my husband's wallet. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. Oh, my God. A tape measure. I have all these things in my purse. Okay. You guys are my people. Now I know I'm amongst my people. Gum, glasses. Oh, my gosh. Candy. Yes. All of the above. Gum. Um, I'm mentally cleaning out my purse and I feel like a hoarder. Purses are as important as shoes. I have like 200 pairs of shoes, you guys, because when I used to work, I had to dress up for the office and um, and I actually did and I loved shoes. So crayons, masks, masks are, I mean, right now masks are important. So this is a mom purse, okay? And it really fits all that stuff. This is kind of a blush color leather, but I wanted to put a baby transfer on here because I thought that this would be a cute like little diaper bag you could put pacifier, like two diapers in here, your little wipe container, um, you know, a toy. It would fit just the necessities in there and it would be like a fashionable, you know, that you could carry around 17 pairs of, okay, my husband's on. You carry 17 pairs of sunglasses, what, in my purse? In my purse? Okay, this is another one. This is kind of a more of a like bohemian style. So I actually did this one last night and I used the beautifully native transfer. And I'm gonna do the other side of this one here with you guys today to show you how I got this design on the front of here. Cause I did have to cut it up a little bit to get it on there. Um, but I think it fits the design of this bag really well. It's like it was made for antlers, right? So, but I also think that this is gonna be fun to show you guys it's a, it's a perfect example of painting and putting transfers on leather. So this is a representation. This could be your chair. This could be your sofa. This could be any of the leather that you have in your home, your boots, your, you can put transfers onto leather and they actually come out beautifully. I haven't sealed this with anything yet, but it's, it's part of the leather. So let me show you guys the first one I'm going to work on. 
<laughs> yeah, you, yeah, put a di you put a diaper in your purse. Exactly. Oh, whoa, a flask. Yeah, Lisa, I, I do believe you have a flask in your purse. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Um, this is the one that I'm working on. So one thing that was important to me is when I'm choosing a transfer for these, what would I actually carry? This is something I feel like I would actually carry. I think it's cute. It's a little bit bohemian. This is, it, it, it's travel. It reminds me of leather boots and, uh, uh, you know, pumpkin spice latte in your hand and a scarf on. And it's, it's really cute. So this one is the ephemera collection transfer. That's not a whole, that's part of the transfer. It's meant to look like a weathered paper. Let me see how close I can get up on this. And I want to show you guys how it picks up the texture of the leather in the transfer because it just seats right onto your leather. You guys see how close that is? You can still see the little texture in the leather. So I'm going to just go over this. This is a seam right here and we're going to do the other side of this one right now and I'm going to show you guys how I got this on here. And it just seats perfectly right against the leather. So let's do the flip side of this one right now. I'm going to lower my camera down a little bit. Okay. I love this too. That was important to me that it actually be something that you, that I would carry myself. And, um, you know, I, I do, I, I love leather boots. Um, I got some extra transfer on my plastic. So I just, I left the stuffing inside and that just gives it some rigidity for when I'm pushing the transfer on. So it has some, um, some surface for me to press against. If you have like a little piece of wood, maybe a cutting board would work and I would just put it in here. You know, now that I'm thinking about that, I may go grab something from inside my house because I would just put it in here. It gives you something that you can press against. I'm going to take this little stuffing out because it creates kind of a lump in here. What do I have that I could put? Oh, I've got a little wooden sign. I am going to put something in here just to give me something that I can press against when I'm pushing that transfer on. Hang on one second. Okay, so this is just a little wood piece of wood I got cut for to make a sign out of, and I'm just gonna stick it right inside here. But this could be a little cutting board from your house that you just tuck inside. It's gonna fit. Oh, it's it's stuck on my purse stuffing. See, this is what I carry around in my purse all day. Signs for painting, right? Okay, and this will make it so I have a little surface and that helps so that I don't get wrinkles in my transfer while I'm pressing against it. I'm moving my stuffing around inside. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. And then I need to get something to lean it on. I'm just gonna give myself a table here. Let's pop this one up. Okay, then I've got kind of a table and my purse has some, like I can press against this now and it's gonna give me a nice rigid surface. Um, do I put a clear coat on? I, I will seal this in clear wax when I'm done. I'm trying to see if I can get my head in there. No, not a stupid face feature I don't need I don't need to make my face look like a pumpkin while I'm doing this okay and I'm going to turn it a little crooked perfect okay so I've got my nice like rigid surface right here and I'm using the ephemera collection transfer so this is another piece of it it's a map it's got a it's got a lot of cool pieces in it and you could cut them up or use any part of it and kind of map it out on your purse how you like I'm gonna bring you guys in and get you right up on my purse. Okay, you don't need to see my face because really, like who wants to see that? Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I get my, I'm gonna get an idea of my transfer placement, okay? Now what I found putting these on is you do get some wrinkles and a little bit of, um, of cracking in it. And so I'm gonna show you afterwards how I fix those, but I anticipate you're gonna see that when I'm going through this. So I cut this piece, this was the piece I used on the other side, is, um, is what's on the other side of my transfer. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna detach it from the backing sheet right here. So 
So I'm going to pull these apart and this is where I've got to commit with the placement on my purse. And I'm going to line up the bottom of my transfer right to the bottom of this of my leather. That gives me a guideline that's nice and straight. All right, so now I'm committed. I'm just gonna lightly press it, and then I'm gonna start working it on. So I have my Redesign with Prima transfer tool out, and I also have one of the little wooden sticks that comes with your transfer. And I might switch back and forth between these two. Um, Amy, did I answer you? I'm gonna put clear wax on this, and we will go through that as we're going. So I'm gonna work from the center, and I'm gonna work my way out on each side, okay? So I'm gonna start at the bottom, and right off the bat, I'm going to show you what the transfer does. Right off the bat, I can see my transfer starts detaching from my backing sheet right here. So I'm going to continue to work that. Don't, don't worry about that white line because we're, we're going to go all the way through this and you'll see these problems solve themselves as we're going. Okay, so I'm going to work it right along this seam. I've got a nice clean line. And then I see right here, like my transfer starts to detach itself. And I'm gonna stay working right from the center, going out one part at a time. And that little bit of rigidity that I added with the board underneath my leather really helps me to have something to press my tool down against. Okay, staying at my center line, I'm gonna hold this down with my fingers just to kind of stretch it out so it holds its shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull this back because this piece right here is already starting to attach. Can you guys see that? This right here has a little crack down at the bottom. That's okay, because what I did is I just took a little bit of my um, Dixie Belle paint. Nikki, so these are a limited release from um, Redesign with Prima. They're gonna be available through your Redesign with Prima retailers. So you can go to redesignwithprima.com and find a retailer near you. They will be ordering these purses. You can let them know even now that you want one. And then they can include that in their ordering. Um, I think these would be fun for like purse parties. If you are a retailer, my thoughts were, um, you could do, these are great examples for showing people how to apply a transfer onto fabric, um, onto leather, and then how to paint on leather too. Okay, so right away, I found you guys that these kind of, the transfers that are kind of sh sheets, like this is kind of a solid sheet, was easier to put on than the pieces. I'm just running my tool um, down the little seam in the middle of my purse here. So I found that this was easier to apply than transfers that come in smaller pieces, unless you can just do one piece at a time. But if it's kind of broken up and it's got some script and stuff on it, just know that those are gonna be a little more challenging and these solid sheet transfers were a little easier to apply. Okay, so this is kind of cool because you can start seeing it looks like leather printed with a map. It is, it is upside down, Nicola. So um, I'm on selfie mode so that I can read the comments on my camera while I'm live. So it's gonna look backwards on camera for you guys. Know that I'm, I do have it um, the right direction. So I can read my map and my text is all facing the right direction, but it is gonna be backwards for you guys. When I take photos, it'll look, it should look normal for you. But I wanted to get up nice and close here so you can really see how the, the transfer takes onto that leather. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep working this. Now I'm coming up to some challenges here and I've got a little emblem in my purse. I'm gonna show you how we work around that. And then I've got the straps for my handles and we're gonna work around those too. I'm actually gonna grab my X-Acto knife. We're gonna cut this transfer a little bit as we go. So I'm grabbing my razor knife right now. Uh, razor knife. Well, I'll just bring this whole thing over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna have one of these little guys on hand right here so that I can start cutting. So I'm gonna come right here and I've got this little emblem it's um, metal and I'm just gonna 
without slicing into my purse, I'm just gonna cut around that. And once I can get a little piece up, I can stick my nail under there and then I, it's easier to cut around. There we go. So this will give me that perfect little oval shape. Don't press down on this, you guys. This is, you're working on fabric. It's like when you open a box from Amazon, you shouldn't go right at it with your razor knife just in case you cut what's inside. So I'm gonna pull this little circle out that I just cut. Now, um, I don't want it to stick on the emblem. I actually want my, my emblem right here to be visible. So I can just, I'm just gonna scratch this. A little bit of my transfer stuck on it already. Just gonna scratch it off. I don't want it on there. I want it to look like it was made to be part of this purse. And so I think um, when you can see the details of the purse, it looks more authentic. Okay, I'm gonna some, come start working up here. This is the center of my purse. I'm still working outwards. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so that I can see it better. And I'll work this side of my transfer right here. And I'm coming up to, this is the handle strap, it's in here. Okay, I'm going to let my transfer go onto the leather strap. Let me show you what it looks like. It's this part right here. It's this thing. This is what I'm gonna go around. I don't wanna get it on this metal ring. I'm gonna stop there and cut it so I can put it up underneath my transfer. But I'm gonna go over this leather right here. Um, the map is from the ephemera collection transfer. I love these map transfers. I have you guys have seen the chests I have in my house that have the map transfers on here. These are probably one of my favorite transfers. I think it's way underutilized. Okay, I'm coming up on my um, strap. I'm going to cut this at the top of my strap. This is where the ring starts right here. I can feel it. And I'm gonna cut my transfer and I'm gonna cut a little square out and that's, I'm gonna come back and put that underneath my handle when I get there. And then it'll look like it's continuing. Okay, it's gonna make sense, but I'm gonna cut this weird square out right now. Oh man, it just stuck to my plastic, that's okay. Mistakes happen. I'll do this one before I get it stuck to the plastic. I can still fix that. Oh, this side doesn't have the plastic on it. So I'm just cutting it where that ring starts. Okay, and this is what it looks like. When I'm done, I'm gonna lift this handle up and put it underneath, okay? So I'm gonna save that little square. This side, I will have to um, take this piece off. It's, on, it's stuck on the plastic. So that's okay. I will probably paint that in to match. We're gonna paint in any, any flaws on this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep working my... So like I said, this could be, if you have leather dining room chairs, even vinyl. You can put a transfer on them. You could put it on the seat backs and have kind of, oh, hey, Jason. Okay, and then I'm gonna come, man, I really messed myself up having that plastic in the way. This plastic on your handle, take this off, you guys. This has messed me up. It's the transfer sticks to it right away. Lesson learned. That's what I'm here for, to make the mistakes for you. Okay, and then I, I'm gonna rub it right against the edge because that's where uh, that's where the transfer ends. It's like the perfect size for the front of this. This this is the ephemera collection transfer, and it's pretty much the perfect size for the front of my purse. So I have relatively little cracking. I have a little crack right here. What country is this? Uh, Poland. I have a little crack right around Poland. And then of course, where I messed up my handle right there, I will have to fix that. Kind of bummed I did that because it was turning out really cute. The other side had flaws in it too. You can't tell though. 
Okay, and then I can start peeling this back. It looks like printed leather. So cool. Okay, I don't wanna get, get ahead of myself. I need to keep rubbing this on. I'm going around this emblem, the little circle emblem that's in the center. If I get a little bit of transfer on there, I can just, um, it scratches right off with my fingernail. You can leave it on the emblem too if you want it to stay on there. I just want my emblem to show through. Okay, and I can start peeling this back. It looks great. I'm going to wrap the corner on the top. I've got about half of it done so far. I like this transfer tool because I can use the corner of it to get into these different shapes. Oh, yes, combat boots. And you could use the, the floral transfers. I thought this was kind of cute. You know, it's a purse, kind of a travel theme, like you're, you're on, the, on the move with your purse. It's something I would really carry. I'm a winter leather boots kind of girl. You'll see when I stage this, it'll give you the vibe that I feel for this. I'm going to work it into that little seam. So this may be a purse that's in, you know, in your closet too that you already have and, and you don't carry it. And so you want to make something that's a little more unique. Got a little piece right here. I'm going to wrap the top. See how I'm pushing the transfer around the top of my purse? And then it's going to wrap that lip instead of breaking off. Where are the transfer tools sold? So Nancy, I put a link above in the post and they have the transfer tools. That's my affiliate link for Redesign with Prima products. This is a Redesign with Prima transfer tool. Awesome tab. Um, I love these for the big transfers because look at this. When you're putting a transfer on and it's one of those big six sheet transfers, you've got all of this surface area to put your transfer on versus this much. And then it's got these little, see this, little notch here can get into really tight crevices. Um, you can get this in here. This also will wrap a, a little curve. See how it's got a little tiny shape to it. It'll wrap a curve. So this is nice for putting on those big transfers when it's a more difficult application. Okay, and I'm coming up, I'm gonna turn this the other direction just so I can see the other side of it now. You guys, that wood inside is a must. If you have something like this, a soft, so if you are doing a pair of boots or something, put something inside of them that gives it some rigidity. If you've got those, what are those wooden boot forms? Put those inside of it. The stuffing helps, but the stuffing has give to it. What is your site? Um, you know what, Delissa? So let me kind of explain. I am a, a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. So I don't physically stock any of their products. I have affiliate links, which are links where you can get them. And I earn a small percentage of those sales through that company. So you guys pay the same prices and I earn what's like a commission. That's what you could compare it to. Um, there are retailers nationwide who do physically stock the products if you want to go in and see them or you want to order something in particular. Um, my affiliate link is at the top of this post. So um, that's a link. They're usually really well supplied in, in everything redesigned with Prima. Um, you can also use the search function if you don't see something right away. They're one of the best supplied retailers of redesign with Prima. They do not have the purses on there yet because these are brand spanking new. Nobody has these yet. Um, so that's kind of how it works. So, so I don't physically stock them. Like I'm not shipping out from my house. I broke up one into two parts. <laughs> yeah, I think civil war going on over here in Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. Uh, this is a, this is a historic map. It's not accurate to modern day. Okay, and so I feel like I can kind of peel this off. I'm working slowly, guys. I prefer to take my time on a transfer and get my application correct than try to rush through it. Transfers are an art. They are an art form. Um, anyone who says that, you know, it's easy or whatever, it's not. It's not that it's not easy. You learn how to do them and they take time and skill. 
Um, I'm rubbing around the edges right now and then I'm going to wrap that top little lip of my purse Okay, and when you wrap a corner with the transfer, the, the clear backing just kind of pops off by itself. So now I'm going to start watching my edges as I go. I'm going to start working this backing sheet off of this transfer. Okay, gently, carefully watching as I pull. I can see the air going in between the backing paper and my transfer, making sure I get this um, leather strap right here. Okay, and it's gonna all detach. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Will you sell this piece? Um, no, but I could always make another another one. I want to keep one. I suppose I could sell it. Um, I really like it. I really like it. But I said, I definitely could message me. What part of Poland did I destroy? Um. Let's see, the only part that I would say I genuinely messed up that I'm gonna have to fix is over here behind this handle because remember I told you I wanted to cut that piece off? Well, it's stuck to my plastic before I could get to it. In fact, here it is right here, stuck on my plastic. I'm gonna see, sometimes I can get it with my fingernail and kind of peel it and place it. Very fragile printing though. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's married to this plastic handle now. It is what it is, and I'm bummed about that. I should have been way more careful about that because I would have liked it to be perfect behind there. Um, I do have another piece of a map transfer that I could place behind here, but um, I, I, I think I'm just gonna paint it in. So now I'm using my fingernail and I'm just gonna um, lay down all of the edges around this little strap handle right here. Okay, that one looks good. Let's do this side right here. See, I'm just writing this little crevice right here because then I can control where that transfer applies. Okay, and I want to get a nice clean edge. My fingernail is enough to just slice that really thin printing, which is what these transfers are. And then I'm going to get, I've got a little bit of excess around my emblem right here. We have a, we have a visitor, you guys. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to flip this handle up and you guys see how I have this square right here. This is where I cut out. I'm going to take this little guy right here. This is what I cut and I'm going to slide it in right under this handle and I'm going to match it up to the lines of my transfer so it looks continuous. Okay, it is the missing piece of this puzzle so it fits right in there. And then I can put it on under my handle. I'm just I'm using the transfer stick this time because it's smaller and this is a tiny little piece. So you can kind of see how the transfer tool versus the stick, that they kind of have different functions. My husband, Sean, just walked out, walked out here, you guys. Jason knew it was you. <laughs> I said, hey, Sean. Yeah, Jason. <laughs> okay, so see, this is what I'm putting back in. I just slid it right in there and I'm super bummed over here. Super bummed. What do you use to seal a rolling pin that's food safe? Um, that's a good question. Most people use their, when they do a rolling pin like this, they use them for decorative accents. Um, Dixie Belle Gator Hide is the most durable, but it's not food safe. Uh, hemp oil is food safe, but not recommended for transfers. My brain is working. Um, I don't know. I would prefer a rolling pin as a decorative accent versus still using it for your food products, I think. See how that worked? I love it. Wah, wah, wah. And I was going to go there on the map. I know. Thanks a lot. You'll, I don't know where I'm going. You'll never know what country Took that Took me a minute was. to figure out. It'll take you a while to figure out what Here, countries let me, are on there Let too. me look at this plastic and see if I can. Overall map. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? It's like Romania. Pretty or sure there's no roads there. on that map. The Arabian Sea. Oh, guys. Maybe I could just cut this piece of plastic off and glue it on there. Where is Ginge? Where is Ginch? Sleeping. Oh, she's sleeping. Okay, she's Which inside she the house. Best. Yeah, she. Um, we're so proud of Ginch. Ginch is my one-year-old boxer, you guys. Yeah, I can't get this off. I'm super bummed. 
Oh, that's a good idea, Arliss. An epoxy would work. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to paint this in. So I'm, I'm not going to stress about it. It is what it is. Um, lesson learned. I made the mistake for you guys. I'm pressing it in with my finger now. Okay, let's talk about sealing this. This is a, a, a let me go through this little crevice right here with my fingernail. This is the seam of the leather. Okay, and I just use my fingernail and it scores that transfer right along the seam of the leather. Okay, my, my emblem is still showing there. So I'm gonna take this board out because I'm really done with my transfer application. And then I can show you guys the front of it. So this is what I'm left with right here. So this is the this is one side, this is the other side. It's really cute. So let's fix some of these areas where I have flaws in my application. Uh, the stuff I sent you in the unscented version is food safe. Oh, that's good to know, Jason. So Jason, do you sell it? Do you sell that? Do you have a website? So, um, oh, I guess let me say this too though, Jason. I think those are oils. I think what you sent me is oils and oils are not recommended for use with transfers. They can cause lifting. So consider that. I like the epoxy idea. I think that's my, that's kind of my favorite so far. Really pretty. So let's grab some clear wax and let's seal. The, uh, actually, I, we'll fix some of these flaws here first. So in fixing the flaws, what I'm looking for is what colors are in my map. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm seeing this is probably some, oh gosh, this is probably French linen in here. I've got some soft green, which might be a dried sage and maybe some sea glass. Those are the colors I'm seeing in here. So I'm going to grab those colors and we will touch up a little bit around the handle of this. So sea glass, French linen, um, and dried sage. And I'm also going to grab my clear, my Dixie Bell clear wax at the same time. Okay, so I grabbed my besting wax and clear. We'll need that in just a minute. What are these oils you speak of? Uh, Aaron, I would compare them to Big Mama's Butter. If you've used Dixie Belle and Big Mama's Butter, and Jason sent me some really cool samples, and they smell really great. So this is French linen. You can kind of see, see that's my background color. Dried sage is similar to French linen, but it's got more greens in it. And my lighting is gonna be kind of hard to show you guys. It's a little more green than French linen. And then sea glass, which would be very faint. So I'll have to mix it with one of my other colors because it's not this bright on my map. And then I'm just gonna take a little artist brush like, like this guy here, just a little pointed artist brush. Um, do I have advice to make it look not so straight? So a couple things, Patricia. I like painting in transfers. Paint along the edges of your transfer, and then you don't see. The, so you, and then you can paint onto the transfer if you want to kind of blur out that edge and make it irregular. So I like to use my paint over the top of it. Um, you can also tear it or cut it in an irregular fashion, but I really like to just use the paint around the edges. And I do that a lot. Paint and transfers, because once you seal it, once you put a sealant over it, the sheen of them matches. Um, you can, uh, if you burnt this transfer, it's on plastic. It's gonna, 
it's going to be plastic. You're burning plastic. So I'm just going to take what's in the lid of my paint on my artist brush and even dab it off. And I'm going to come in here right along this handle. Let me show you guys what I'm... Can you see that dark leather of the handle where it wrapped? This is what I'm fixing. I'm going to camouflage this. You guys, when you paint onto fabric and you seal it with wax, you know what it feels like? Leather. So when I'm painting on leather, it's going to feel like leather. Um, Jason, I picked up a bunch of, um, someone had old maps of New York, printed maps of New York that they were giving away. So I picked up a bunch of old maps of New York that I've been saving to use on something. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. But absolutely, old maps are really cool decoupage projects. So I'm looking at my map and I've got another place on the other side of this leather right here that I want to fix. Just I'm just going to camouflage that in. I'm going to bring you guys in really close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. This plastic is it's it's just reminding me that I messed up right here. I feel like it's laughing in my face. I'm going to just cut it off. It's making me upset. It's kind of in my way at this point. It's not protecting anything. It actually ended up causing me more trouble. So I'm going to just take it off. I'm pretty mad. I'm pretty mad. I'm pretty bitter. Okay, so let's come in here a little. I'm just dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to even tap that off into a dry spot and I'm going to come over here and just put it in that crevice right there now up here I'm going to go ahead and paint this leather that I couldn't cover so this is the strap because I want this to all look continuous okay so this is the top of my little strap right here this is where I am and then down in way in this crevice behind it. My French linen is a perfect match to the background on this. So um, whoever asked if I were to paint this in in French linen, it would look like a broken edge because that's my background color. I'm telling you dot, dot, dot. I know, I know. But sometimes like sometimes it's not, sometimes it's fine detail painting too. little bit more paint and I'm getting in here I really like how this is looking okay up here I feel like my color is a little bit more French or um, dried sage so I'm going to take my lid off my dried sage it's just a little more green you guys are seeing the wrong handle I'm working on this one shake up my so this is Dixie Belle dried sage Probably even a little more green than dried sage, but I think this will be an okay match. Oh, I grabbed an unopened one. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to take my lid and a tiny, tiny bit of dried sage, tap it off. It's my same brush. Yeah, that's a good match. And then I'm going to kind of blend it out with my finger a little bit. Come up here. Redo this because it, it dried already and it needs a second coat. I'm going to get up here around my em emblem. I have a little crack that's in the green. So you're just going around these details. It um, forces the transfer a little bit. I'll clean off my emblem when I'm all done so it's nice and shiny again. Got a little bit of a adhesive on it where I took that transfer off of it. And here has a little tiny dot. Okay. So, can you see that? Now with the little bit of paint on the sides of it, once I seal my paint and everything, you won't even be able to tell that I did that. It looks like it's all a continuous piece. My emblem, I've got a nice cut around it. I, I scratched off some transfer, so it's just got some glue on there. I'll just clean it off. Can you do this on a leather tabletop? You can, you can. Uh, 
um, Marla, you could put a transfer on it. I'm curious what type of damage it has. That would that would be my answer to that. I'd want to know, does it have cracking in it? I don't know what type of damage you mean. Um, if it's got cracking, you probably want to fill underneath it, unless you like the cracking and you want kind of an, an, an age look. So I'm going to kind of stipple in a little bit of where I lost this section right here with my paint color. Now what I could do is I have a lot of transfer scraps that have text on them. So I could come in with some tiny, like um, some tiny little text. And, and even if it wasn't the correct words, like it's not map words, you wouldn't even know. As long as it looks okay to the eye, um, you won't even know this spot exists. So can you see how my paint matches to up to the back of my transfer there? This could be any leather. So like Marlo, you were asking about putting this on leather on your on a desk or something. A lot of old desks have that leather top. You can, and if it's not the right size transfer, you can paint in around it. And then once I seal this all, it's all gonna have the same sheen. You won't notice that I did a little repair job. This is still my dried sage, it's a little bit green. Okay, I'm just going to get a layer on here and then I can come back and kind of work some other colors in if I want to. Or I can leave it all dried sage because it's the different countries are just slightly different colors. It's a very vintage looking map. Okay, so if I just cover my leather and then let me show you guys. Even just with that right there, it looks better than it did with the brown showing. I could paint on the sides here, but I don't think I really need to. That would be totally optional. Um, oh, Marla, it has some peeling. Okay, you need to fix that first. So either get it peeled to where it's all an even clean surface. Otherwise, whatever you put on top is at risk of peeling along with it in the future. It's um, so get it repaired first. Peel off any any sections you want, um, and then you can put you can put a transfer over the top of that leather, and then you just seal it in a clear wax when you're done. So I'm doing the same thing on this side. I'm just going along the sides of this leather handle. Oops. Still doing my dried sage. I'm gonna take and get a little bit of sea glass and make a mix of sea glass dried sage. And let's work some of that in so I've got some different colors up in here. So I'm gonna take my sea glass, get my camera up a little bit. There we go. So this is the section we're gonna work in right here. Can you map and decoupage instead of using a transfer? Um, transfers have a little more flex to them, so I like them on fabric a little bit better than decoupage. Is that, you know, that leather is still gonna, so I'm just gonna take in my lid here and I'm mixing a little bit of my dried sage and sea glass. Okay, and that makes this sort of vintagey greenish blue that I've got actually on this purse. Probably a little bit more sea glass in there. I just put a little bit on and it's a little more blue than what I had. It's a little bit of mixture. Transfers have a little bit of flex to them. Okay, and I'm just gonna kinda work this in around about to where this map would be. This is me fixing my mistake. I'm really bummed I did this. But just know that if you do the same thing, you're not, you have not ruined your project. I'm just pulling the strap aside a little bit, touching up in there. My edge right here, see how my transfer wrapped onto that edge? The only spot it didn't wrap is right in here, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I want it to look continuous. I'm going to get rid of that dark leather around the top. Guys, I have high standards for my purses. I'm not going to carry this if it doesn't look right. That's totally honest. Okay, 
I like that. And then I think I am going to find a little bit of a script transfer and I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut out like a couple tiny, tiny letters. Let me camouflage that a little bit better. I'm just going to get a little bit more of my French linen. And then once I have some script over here, I don't think you'll even notice. Got a little crack right there and a little one right here. Those are really, like, I got really few cracks in this transfer. It's a really clean application. So take it slow. Put something behind it if you can when you're putting a transfer onto fabric. And it, it comes out really clean. And then I just touched up right around the handles. Okay, really clean application. So even with my handle flipped up, you don't really notice that I'm missing this script right there, but I will go ahead and put some on there. Just That's just my own. My mom is on. Mom, I need to ask you a question. I thought you would love this one. Tell me if this, is this you? This reminds me of my mom, you guys. This one here. She likes these backpack purses. So I really like this one and it's got a little bit of metallic on it. Um, delete that last comment. Mom, come on and tell me if, if you like this one. It's a, it's kind of a silvery with the pocket metallic pocket in the front, but this one reminded me of my mom. One of those backpack purses. She, she carries these. So I'm kind of saving that one for her. All right, you guys, what do you think? Thumbs up? Give me thumbs up if you would actually carry this. This side is, okay, let me show you where I touched up on this side. I had a spot here that I touched up. This is vintage duck egg into this line right here. Cannot even tell. And then, of course, all around my handle, I did the same thing. So let's go ahead and seal this. I'm going to take my Dixie Bell Besting Wax and Clear. My mom isn't answering me. Hey, Jackie, how are you? And then I'm going to take a little brush like this guy here. Let's see if I've got a little bit softer one. You know what? I'm going to put my wax on. I'm going to buff it like, a, like you would wax a car. I'm just going to use my rag here. Hey, Paige. Okay, um, so I'm just going to take my besting wax and it's like you would, if you had leather in your home, if you have leather sofas, you know that you polish your leather. Okay, when I work this in to my paint, my paint absorbs it and it softens that paint and it makes it feel like leather. Okay, and then I can, I can put this onto, it's like a conditioner. I'm just buffing it. This also helps to press my transfer down into my into my wax. I would carry this one too. That was really important to me, that it actually be something that I would carry. You know, you can make a whole bunch of fun designs, but if I wouldn't actually carry it, okay, and this, I'm getting a really nice sheen on my leather. I can still see all the dimpling in it. Um, Dixie Bell Clear Wax in the container is white. It dries clear. Mine is actually a little discolored because I mixed a really old wax in this container. Um, how will this wear? <sighs> how will this wear? I'm going to use it and I will let you know. But um, I would say I would not, I would probably not use it as my, you know, going to the beach, throwing it in the sand, like, you know, your roughest use handbag that you have. Don't let it be this one. But what do I do with my purses? I carry it to the store under my arm. I come home. I set it on the counter. Um, in the car, it sets in my center console. It's like uh, under my arm, it's going to do fine. Sitting on my counter and my center console, it'll do fine. So 
you know, your kid, is it going to be your kid's play purse? If I took a fingernail to this and I wanted to get it off, oh yeah, I will show it in just a minute, Ray. I could, I could fingernail scratch. It would take some work. I, I mean, I'm tempted to do it to show you guys only, you know what, let's do it down here on this. See where I got this clear? I want it to come off anyway. Can you see me scratching this with my fingernail? See, I mean, if I keep going at it and I want it off, see I'm getting little bits, but do you see how hard I'm having to scratch at it? So, and then I've just got a little adhesive left right here and I can just clean that right off. But otherwise I've got a nice clean edge. So here's another little bit. I should touch this up with my paint. I can scratch it off with my fingernail, but it takes a little bit of effort. And that's where I mean that, yeah, it has, I'm gonna just do this little spot right down here. Oh, I see, you're comparing it to leather boots. I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, I have leather suede boots that I painted, okay, Uggs, and I painted them couple years ago I wear them every winter they look better I use clear wax put clear wax on it and you can apply reapply the clear wax mine were black so I actually use black wax um, you can reapply the wax as needed and it gives you like you, if you have leather anything you re you put new protectant on it right weather protectant put wax on it you can wax it so I waxed my leather boots, or they're suede, they're Uggs. And if I want to, I reprotect them as needed, depending on how much wear they get. And they have, they're, they're, they wear better than my Uggs that are not painted. Because the, when, they're, when they're not painted, you have to worry about, did water touch it? Um, is it going to get water spots? They're wipeable now. They're wipeable now. My Ugg boots are wipeable. Um, just with some paint. So same process. If you want to put a transfer on them, you can re-wax over it as needed. Um, it will have, the transfer has limitations in wear. So like I just showed you, if I scratch at it with my fingernail, I can get it off. They're not going to be your, don't put it on your, uh, I don't know, Carhartt work boots or whatever. This is my uh, paint spot up here that I touched up. So I'm just waxing it and it the paint absorbs it. It seals my paint and softens it. Let's wax my other side too. And then I'll leave it for about 10 minutes and I'll come back and I can buff the excess wax. Um, Clapton, go to my page. Uh, I Go to my page at Brush by Brandy or you'll have to message me because they are posted. They are posted. Um, go to my page and just in the search function, type in the word Uggs, U-G-G-S. Even you could type in boots, um, boot. Think of uh, search words like that, they will come up. They are posted onto my page. In fact, I even um, did one on camera at one point because I have two pairs that are painted now. Okay, I'm just waxing this transfer makes it nice and soft. The sheen now where I painted in matches the sheen of my transfer. I'm gonna let this sit and I will come back and buff this wax. It's gonna feel like it sits on the surface. So right now I feel that wax. I need to let it set up a little bit, absorb into my leather, into my paint, and then anywhere where there's excess that's not gonna be absorbed, that's what I will buff away. Um, before you do this, you want to make sure that your transfer is nice and adhered. So go around it all with your fingers. Make sure it's all pressed down because otherwise I'm rubbing it. I can pull up any loose edges that I've got. So just think about that. Check your transfer everywhere before you come back and try to buff over the top of it. Okay, I'm gonna, and I'll let this wax sit and I'll just come back and buffing just means I'm gonna take a dry part of my rag and just gently buff it. It's like waxing your car. You put the wax on, you come back a few minutes later, you take the wax off. That's all you're doing. You wax your purse, right? Um, 
So what I'm seeing right now is I'm doing this edge right here. How can I show you guys this? I have to bring my camera down. It's, um, you can't even see the edge once I wax it. Okay, if you look really closely, I've got like a little halo right here. Let me get a little bit of wax on my rag. And once I wax over that, onto the leather of my purse, and I can be pretty aggressive with this. I'm rubbing right on the transfer because I already checked this side when I applied it. And it gives me like a seamless application. This stripe right here just looks like this is the stripe of the transfer, the dark brown. The blue is the transfer. This is my purse. I cannot tell that this, so this is a great transfer for this, that this is my purse and this is where my transfer starts. I could paint this in dark brown if I wanted to, but I feel like it really, oh yeah, Sarah, yeah, you could, I mean, I'll show you, I'll show you guys the other one I did. So I'm gonna let this sit. Well, let me show you guys one last time what this project looks like. Okay, this is one side. It's got a coat of wax on it. I'm just gonna let it sit and I'll come back and buff it away. It's got a nice sheen on it right now. This is my other side with the map. Okay, super cute. So I like this one. Um, and then I said I would show you this boho bag. This is the other one I did. This is with the Beautifully Native transfer. Ugh, the camera keeps falling. The weight of itself is pulling it down. This is the Beautifully Native transfer on this kind of boho bag here. So this one, I had to cut the antler off to make them, they were leaning a little up too far this way. So I just cut them off and they went joop and stuck them back on her head. Okay, this one I have not waxed yet either. We could wax this and it would take a little bit of this halo down. This is an older transfer too. So I feel like I like the look of it better once I put the wax on it. I just did this little section right here. Makes it really soft too. Okay, somebody wanted to see the inside of this bag. So I just feel like, um, you know, if you're doing, if you're a retailer and you're doing like a purse party or something, there's a lot of things you can show to teach on these bags and they're decent quality too. This is my inside. One big pocket. I've got a cell phone pocket here and a zipper pocket on this side. The, the rest is open, open storage. Aside from cell phone pocket, zipper pocket. So, and then it's got your handle. This is a single handle one. So I wanted to put the rest of the skull on this side of it. I've only done the one side of it right now. Cute. And very bohemian against the browns. So this is my favorite though. This is hands down. I love this transfer. Use a transfer that you love. Use a transfer that speaks to your personality. That's unique to you. That somebody's going to look at and say, oh my gosh, that is really cute. And um, it fits your personality. And I feel like this one fits me. This is what, this is me. This is my style. Um, you know, but if you like the florals, like put your florals on there. You can paint them. Thanks, Sharon. They were fun. They were fun. Um, all right, you guys. Oh my gosh, I've been on for an hour. That was a great project though. It was fun and it was a little bit relaxing. So if you're a retailer, these are fun classes. Get a group of women together that are friends. Let them choose their, you know, their transfer that speaks to them. Um, scraps of flowers that you can put all over, especially against the pink. The pink takes flowers really well. I could see this with um, uh, uh, Rose Celebration. It's got those blush and uh, coral tones in it would be really pretty against this. Any of the flowers. Judy, look up your local retailer at redesignwithprima.com. These are limited edition and they're going to be getting them soon. Okay. So you're going to have to contact your retailer. 
Oh, you're welcome, Erin. So contact your local retailer, redesignwithprima.com, find a retailer, contact your retailer, let them know, let them know you want to do, you want to get some of your, oh, you could do this like on a, on a Zoom. I know you want to get together with your girlfriends, but if you have to have a, someone's having their 40th birthday, you want to celebrate, put them all on a Zoom call, decorate your purse together. You could send them like a little package beforehand with their purse and their transfer, and then you guys all do it on camera together. That would be fun. I would do that. All right, guys, I'm going to pop off. So redesignwithprima.com, you can find your retailer. This is the ephemera collection transfer, which is available at the link that I put above in the post, along with all the Dixie Bell paint that we used and the Dixie Bell clear wax that we used. I'm still going to let this set up so that I can come back and just buff away this excess wax. Purses and shoes are a girl's best friend. Jackie, you're my people. <laughs> you're my people. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. I got to go to Costco today. Um, it's one of those days. And I hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Can I tell you guys this piece behind me I'm going to be posting really soon? And it's absolutely gorgeous. Also at the link above in my purse, do you guys see this red wax right here? Fire Ruby. It's Fire Ruby by Art Alchemy. And it gave this piece a really kind of Spanish feel, like old Spanish castle feel. Um, check out Fire Ruby. <laughs> okay. Happy weekend, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me. I had fun. I feel like I created something that I'm proud of. I'm going to stage it with really cute photos. So go follow me at Brush by Brandy if you don't already and, um, and see pictures of it. Bye, everyone.